recorded portions of the program produced by Bonnie Bung, Shaverit Henson, and Rachel Herndon. Kelly R. Mars is at the controls with Max Pringle. I'm Mark Miracle. Good this is KPFA 94.1 FM and 89.3 FM KPFB in Berkeley. And stay tuned for Apex Express after this important message. This week in the community calendar, May Day Labor Film Festival, the African Scientific Institute, Child Abuse Prevention, Film Life and Debt. This is the listing of upcoming events for the Bay Area. Please listen closely for contact numbers. The third annual Santa Cruz May Day Labor Film Festival, Real Work, will show movies at UCSC, Cabrillo College, on the historical victories and ongoing struggles of labor movements all across the globe. From April 25th to May 1st, call 831-459-5583 for more information. The African Scientific Institute will present an allied health-free job fair, reaching out to the black community at the Washington Inn at 495 10th Street in Oakland on April 24th from 2 to 5 p.m. For more information, call 510-653-7027. The Child Abuse Prevention Center is offering a training session for volunteers to help stop child abuse in San Mateo and Santa Clara counties at 373 West Julian Street on the second floor in San Jose on April 24th. For more information, call 408-975-5383. The film Life and Debt, which addresses the impact of the IMF, the World Bank, the Inter-American Development Bank, and globalization on Jamaica, will be presented at World Centric in the AHA Center at 2121 Staunton Court in Palo Alto on April 27th at 7.30 p.m. For more information, call 650-856-2019. The community calendar is produced by members of the KPFA Apprenticeship Program. Send your listing at least three weeks in advance to KPFA, Box 51, 1929 Martin Luther King Jr. Way in Berkeley, California, 94704. Tell us if your event is wheelchair accessible. To hear this calendar again, call 510-848-6767, extension 621. That's 510-848-6767, extension 621. The community calendar is also available online at www.kpfa.org. Apex Express, Asian Pacific Expression. Community and cultural coverage, music and calendar. New visions and voices coming to you with an Asian Pacific Islander point of view. It's time to get on board the Apex Express. Good evening and welcome to Apex Express. I'm your host, Ranjit DeGiesler. Tonight on Apex, we'll get some hip-hop flavor from some artists about an upcoming event called Top Ryman. And we'll feature the award-winning film Clay Bird. And finally, some folks from the KPFA First Voice Apprenticeship Program will come on to talk about their program, our program, and the upcoming deadline. So stay tuned to Apex. During the late 70s, hundreds of thousands of Vietnamese people fled their homelands, many leaving on small wooden boats under such strenuous and dangerous conditions to search for a new life. Many people came to the United States, and it was in 1979 that a group of Vietnamese refugees who had settled in San Francisco's Tenderloin neighborhood came together to form the Vietnamese Youth Development Center. Seeing a lack of services for Southeast Asian youth, they came together to organize a center that would offer much-needed support for youth as they adjust and assimilate into American culture and assume the new identity as, quote, Asian Americans. The VYDC still exists today in the Tenderloin District. The center has grown to serve an increasing number of refugees and immigrant populations, many groups including Cambodians, Laotians, and other various ethnic backgrounds. They have a deep history and a lot going on. So joining us to talk about this organization and some of the many services and upcoming events that they have to offer are is Don Nguyen. He is part of VYDC's Freestyle Fridays and has been with VYDC for several, year, several years. And also joining us are members of Magnetic North. 
Derek Kahn and Teresa Vu. They are part of a benefit event called for VYDC called Top Ryman, and they're an Asian American hip hop group. So welcome all of you to Apex. Thanks. Thank you. So Dong, let's start with you and. You know, I mentioned some of the history of VYDC. How did you get involved with this organization, and you know, when was that? Well, I started with VYDC probably uh, in 1994 or so. I uh, worked as a youth in the peer re peer peer resource group. You know, that's training into leadership programs and that type of thing. And uh, later on, I started acting a little bit and doing a little a few plays here and there. <clears throat> they did a lot of theater training with us and a lot of you know theater arts and performance arts type things so that's where I, I got my foundation from and why did you you know why did you go there or what was bringing you to the well, organization VYDC is like refuge you know what I mean kids in the line that don't have a place to go they have the rec center the TL recreation center on Ellis Street and they had the Vietnamese Youth Development Center so they had places to go you know what I mean otherwise they'd just be on the streets kicking it all the time or just maybe selling drugs I mean that was the the environment out there at the time. So a lot of kids took refuge there. And there's video games, there's tutoring, there's so many other options. You know, kids can sign up for activities and get involved with the many programs that they have available there. And still today, youth are going there for programs. Mm -hmm. um, what are There was recently a report that um, VYDC was involved with um, kind of outlining a lot of the issues that youth are facing these days. What are some of the things that you see working with the youth? You know, what are some of the things that the people are saying to you about stuff that they're facing? Um, the cool thing about VYDC is that they open up lines that aren't there. You know, a lot of Asian kids in the Tenderloin aren't able to talk to their parents or talk to teachers at school, and they don't have that, that connection. And at VYDC, they're able to come in there, and the youth are, some of the youth grew up in the v in the Tenderloin district, and some of the youth, uh, some of the people that work there are, you know, <clears throat> they're very aware of what's going on, on on the streets and stuff. So I mean, it's a really laid back environment. So it opens up a lot of communication lines. So that's I think that's very important. We want to talk about some of the services that VYDC offers, but um, before we get to those, you're involved with Freestyle Fridays. Mm -hmm. What's up with Freestyle Fridays? Freestyle Friday is a thing that's going on in cooperation with the luggage store at 509 Cultural Center on Ellis Street. What we do is we open up the floor on Fridays, every Friday since August, and kids from the neighborhood, there's an open mic, we got instrumental beats, and they come in and they can learn to break dance. You know, there's an open forum, they can go on the mic and just spit whatever they want to spit and rhyme and stuff. So, I mean, it's, it's an alternative. That's what we're doing, Freestyle Friday, as, as opposed to the Friday nights where everybody's outside smoking, drinking, getting high, and going out and messing around with other folks and starting trouble. So, I mean, Freestyle Friday is hopefully there to, to influence them and stray them into their artistic expression. And if folks want to go to Freestyle Fridays, you want to give out um, the address and a number maybe if people are listening want to go? Yes, yes. It's uh, 509 Ellis Street. Uh, cross Street is Leavenworth, and we're there like 5 to 9 every Friday. And uh, it's an open mic. You know, if you want to come in there and spit something, spit some truth, let us hear, then that's cool. Um, if you want to contact us at VYDC, it's 415-771-2600. And they're located on Eddy Street, 150 Eddy Street. And that's the voice of Dong Win. He's part of VYDC's Freestyle Fridays and has been with VYDC for many years. And, you know, speaking of, of hip-hop, there's an event coming up as well that you guys are, are sponsoring called Top Ryman. Why do you think hip-hop, um, and, and either of you also in the studio, Derek Khan and Teresa Vu, you're involved with this event, um, you're with the uh, Magnetic North. Why do you think hip-hop is such an important vehicle or, or musical form that youth are, you know, why hip-hop? Well, uh, you go ahead, Derek. Okay. Well, I think, you know, hip-hop concentrates a lot on lyrics. And so, you know, when people can write lyrics, they can really express how they feel and just vent how they're feeling or what they're going through. And, you know, hip-hop shows, you know, people just come together and enjoy a good time, you know? So. Yeah, I mean, it's um, hip-hop is just like a really great way to galvanize the community, you know? Like, um, a lot of these events that... Uh, Asian American hip hop artists go to, they usually are for a, a good purpose, like um, the Vietnamese Cultural Center that Dong's speaking about. And uh, it's just a good way to bring a bunch of people there, you know, enjoy some local homegrown hip hop, you know, just kick back, have fun. 
So what are some of your influences and like what, you know, what do you bring to the game of hip hop? Um, we write our own beats and so uh, I think that that's a lot really different than other hip hop. Um, we're trying to make unique beats with a lot of melody and so to blend that with uh, really, uh, you know, deep lyrics. Well, I guess deep is subjective, but we just right. try to keep our lyrics real, you know, like, um, I mean, we don't really live the lifestyle of, you know, like diamond encrusted wine goblets and stuff. And I don't got a big chain. So, you know, I got to rhyme about what's what's real to me, you yeah. know, so it's kind of a different different perspective that you don't really get on the radio a lot. Do you want to tell me a little bit about the event that's coming up? All right. Top Rhyming is happening on Wednesday, April 28, 2004. It's an Asian Pacific Hip Hop Flavor, a benefit of the Vietnamese Youth Development Center in co-op with uh, Asian Week. All right, it's going to be at uh, Studio Z, which is on 314 11th Street, Folsom, uh, San Francisco, California. If you guys have any questions, you can, guys can go to www.studioz.tv or call 252 76 Six six. It's going to be a uh, twenty one and over, uh, seven to ten dollars sliding scale, five dollars with student ID, and there's going to be a ton of Asian performers there. You guys want to come support? You know what I mean? Show some love for the Asian hip hop community, and even if you're not Asian, you know, come through. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just to show that love. So uh, you want to give us a taste of you know what we're going to see if we go? We want to hear. We want to hear. Magnetic North. All right. Let's put up the track three, uh, I think, right? Yep. Yeah. Brand new track we just finished like a couple of days couple ago. Couple days ago. They Hot make off. their own beats, lyrics. Hot off the track. Yeah, this song is called Under Control. Mm -hmm. I got everything, everything yo, under, under control. control. Let it go, yo, what's under, under control? control? I got everything, yo, under, under control. control. Just let it go, yo, what's under, under control? control. I got it all, all under control, under the soul, cause the flaws, flaws coming to go, coming to go, I won't fall, nah, much to compose, trust me, you know, just, uh, uh, just let it go, just let it go, I got it all, all under control, control, under the soul, cause the flaw, flaws coming to go, coming to go, I won't fall, nah, much to compose, trust me, you know, just, just let it go, just let it go I got it all, all under control Since I was born on the April 19th In the eye of the storm See, my mother was torn She was warned in advance That this operation held an eighth of a chance That we both survived, but we both alive So there must be a reason why I was kept breathing And even if I hadn't figured out the answer I plan to never look back And that's my mantra I stand up and damned if my luck seems slow Cause my grandma was said in my bloodstream Yo, was the blood of a million Vietnamese children that died like a soldier, though born a civilian That same resilience is here in my soul It's entrenched in my skin tone and bred in my bones And that's why I know that it's under control Even when it falls apart like the walls of Jericho Yo, under control, under the soul Cause the flaws, coming to go, coming to go I won't fall, much to compose, just make it know Just, uh, uh, just let it go, just let it go I got it all, under control, under the soul Cause the flaws, coming to go, coming to go I won't fall must to compose Yo, just let it go, baby, just let it go On the surface you might think my life is it's perfect All quiet and calm, full of peace and, and purpose. purpose But inside you'll find a team of demons casting, casting curses, curses. Clown in my soul like, like a, a crowded crowd circus. circus And it hurts us, us being my soul and, and my shoulders. shoulders And though I can pull miracles like, like Moses So I won't feel hopeless, I still will hold, hold this it. together Whatever the weather, I'll never lose focus, focus. And that's for show sure. trick, my neck is protected. protected The stress can get next to my chest To congest it, I'll just brush the dust Got my shoulders to the left and breathe in, breathe out, and leave the crowd breathless. So to hell with the cost of regret, cause I'm blessed with the power from the cross on my necklace. And through it all, I won't fall for being reckless. It's all in the control, cause every second muscle strength. I got it all, all under, under control, control, under the soul, cause the flaw, flaws come and go, come and go, I won't fall. Nah, I'm much to compose, just make a no, just, uh, uh, just, just let it go, just let it go. Hey, that was tight. Ooh. Magnetic North. Derek Khan, Teresa Vu. That's a new track. Yeah, yeah brand new. Just right that. here, off, hot off the press, Apex mm -hmm. Express. You want to say anything about that piece? Um, we just finished it uh, two days ago, and um, we've been wanting to write the song for a while because like, a lot of times in the past couple of months, we just feel like things are getting out of hand and we're not getting our business done, so mm -hmm. came in a good time. Yeah. It's just a kind of way to like regroup all the experiences in your life, you know, and try to turn them positive, you know, and just get it under control. Yeah. 
You can see Magnetic North at Top Ryman. It's the Asian Pacific Hip Hop Showcase, benefits the v Vietnamese Youth Development Center, happening Studio Z, 314 11th Street at Folsom in San Francisco. And, you know, we're talking about the event and the v Vietnamese Youth Development Center all here on Apex Express. I'm Ranjita. Um, Dong, maybe you could talk a little bit about more about some of the... Um, some of the programs that VYDC is offering, and you know, there's also another event coming up. You guys are busy, busy, you know? busy, busy. Refugee, which you know talks. A, well, maybe you could tell us about this uh, Refugee. movie. Refugee, Refugee is a cool movie. Right, it's about Mike Siv. Mike Siv goes back to Cambodia, and he's looking for his father. You guys have to check it out. I don't want to spoil it for you, but it's uh, in co-op with uh, the National Asian American Telecommunications Association, and. Um, the East Bay Asian Youth Center and Hard Knock Radio are proud Ooh. to present. KPFA. Uh, <laughs> Spencer Nasako's Refugee. It's a cool movie. You guys should come check it out. They're doing a free screening on Thursday, April 29th at 7 p.m. at the Herbst Theater at 401 Van Ness in San Francisco. There's also going to be music from Proch, who is also going to be performing at Top Ryman. So uh, come check that out, either one of the shows. Cool. So that's a free screening. Filmed by Spencer Nakasako. And Michael Siv. And Michael Siv. Refugee, Thursday, April 29th, 7 p.m., Herbs Theater. All right, check it out. Um, and closing, are there any, um, can you give out some contact info about the Vietnamese Youth Development Center? The Vietnamese Youth Development Center, uh, you guys can call 415-771-2600. Uh, if you guys have any questions, if you guys have any Asian young youth that wants some tutoring, that wants some guidance, that wants some job placement, that wants some freestyling to go on, anything that you want. I mean, Vietnamese Youth Development Center, I mean, it's the place to go. You know, I mean, it's, it's real youth with real issues and real questions, and we got real answers. So I think it's important that we, we let the kids know that there are places out there that, that support them in that way and, right. and that push them into their artistic expression, like I said earlier, and get them to perform tight songs like Magnetic North, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> Hey, I how mean, can we get in touch with Magnetic North besides uh, going to the event, of course? We right. have a website, uh, www.magnetichiphop.com. Yeah, we got uh, downloads on there, um, just a calendar for upcoming events, you know, just a lot of links yeah. and stuff. It's cool. Uh, we'll be putting on an album probably around June, July, summer this year. So, um, like the song you just heard, we haven't recorded yet, but we plan to put it together in the next couple of weeks. Uh, but on the website, we already have some songs that we've done that will be on the album also. Cool. We'll check it out. We'll wait for that. So I want to thank you all for coming on Apex Express. Derek Khan, Teresa Vu of Midnight North, and Don Wynn from VYDC Freestyle Friday. Thank you for coming. Thank Thanks you. for having us. Let's go out with a music break by Kiwi, who will be at the event at Studio Z. It's off his new album, Rites of Passage, and it's called Turn It Around. Is a double edged knife, and when I spit, I hit multiple stab wounds in the mic. Wounds so deep that the speakers bleed light. I recite the sun, I add up all the nonsense to crack the stuff. I come from the end of a gun where freedom lies in between where the people fall and the people rise. I see the lies and the truth. I see the past, present, and future when I see the eyes of the youth. We taking shots as if our lives were absolute, knowing damn well that the pigs didn't have to shoot. From the first to the forty-first, from the cradle to the grave, from the coffin to the hearse, from the masses to the slave. I squeeze juice from the fruits of our labor, take two sips and pass the flavor off to my neighbor in this land of pimp players and player haters. Whatever happened to the teachers and the motivators? All my people in the place, let me see you put your fist up. We put it down for whoever wanna get crunk. Take the system and turn it around. Lick shot, Babylon. On fire, burn to the ground. If you sick of being silent, are you ready to resist what? We put it down for whoever wanna get crunk. Take the system and turn it around. Big shot, Babylon on fire, burn to the ground.
I represent the pain and the hunger. I spit testaments when I rain and thunder. I control weather, like whether or not we gon' reach our endeavors. Whether or not we gon' make it to the promised land together. Please, I'm sick of waiting for change. I'm talking about generating the change. I'm taking aim, breaking these chains. I'm rolling with a million G's, waiting to bang. So your sets up. We about to upset the setup. I took heat to ball Marley, talking about get up, stand up. Where my soldiers at? Put your hands up. What if we turn the tables and put the pigs in handcuffs? We amped up, ready for war, ready to counter react and fight back like never before. Marching to the White House, yelling never no more. Right here, no fear, time to settle the score. All my people in the place, let me see you put your fists up. We put it down for whoever wanna get crunk. Take the system and turn it around. Lick shot, Babylon, fire burn to the ground. If you sick of being silent, are you ready to resist what? We put it down for whoever wanna get crunk. Take the system and turn it around. Lick shot, Babylon, fire burn to the ground. <laughs> And they are casting because as long as one of our prophets is in jail, we are casting. We won't be free until we are all free. I got one rhyme for each reason, two for each bum sleeping on the street freezing. Of this government, I spit treason. This is for the thugs and the G's and the breakdancers, rap writers, MCs and turntablists. We dismiss the hate and prejudice in this racist metropolis. It's hard to be an optimist at the unemployment office. It's preposterous. This government is missing all of us, raping and robbing us for centuries. Then twist the history, calling us the enemy. Then twitch my misdemeanor, calling it a felony. There ain't no questioning what all of this is telling me In the eyes of the principal, pigs of the judge I'm just another criminal, pimp or a thug And my color just to me getting hit with a club Make me question if I'm even doing this for the love Reality, no question this is new music by DJ Kiwi off his new album called Rites of Passage, Portraits of a Sun Rising. And that's a S-O-N, Rising Sun. And the song is called Turn It Around. This is Apex Express. My name's Ranjita, and you're listening to KPFA Radio 94.1 FM. Coming up next, we have a feature on a new film called Clay Bird. It's an award-winning film. Our own G... Jenna Hota will uh, do a feature on this, so stay tuned. The award-winning film, Clay Bird, is somewhat based on the director's life, Tariq Massoud's experience in Bangladesh. It has as its backdrop the convergence of religion, war, and the convulsions brought about as Bangladesh became a new nation around the year 1971. The Clay Bird is Bangladesh's first submission to the foreign language uh, Oscar competition and received uh, an award at Cannes, which we'll go into a little bit more. There will be several showings at uh, different theaters locally, and the first is uh, a premiere on Friday, April 30th at 7 p.m. at the Castro Theater in San Francisco. So I'd like to welcome everyone here tonight. First, I'd like to say welcome to Tariq Mossoud. Thank you very much for having me, uh, having us here. And Catherine Mossoud, the producer, and uh, Yvonne Jagadar, who is uh, a presenter and uh, very, very much a uh, mover and shaker in the film community and uh, of Third Eye. He's going to be presenting uh, The Clay Bird, and he'll be talking about the different presentations as well. Uh, first of all, um, Tariq, I wanted to ask you, um, not too many people know about what happened uh, in terms of Bangladesh, that many uh, thousands, hundreds of thousands of people died. I remember starved to death, actually, when uh, the war happened between what was formerly known as East Pakistan and West Pakistan, and I believe West Pakistan becomes Bangladesh in 1971. East and Pakistan becomes. There was a tremendous, tremendous amount of suffering then. What, what happened to you at that time, and how does that form the backdrop of this particular movie? Well, I was uh, in mid-60s, I was sent to Madrasa Islamic School by my father, who became suddenly very religious, almost like a new, new Muslim. And, a born-again uh, born Muslim. Born again Muslim. 
and uh, I was in Madras until uh, the very beginning of the war. Um, and it was a very difficult time, as you understand, very turbulent time, because the, there was uh, military, there was a democratic movement against the military junta in Pakistan, Islamist military junta. Which is now uh, known as Pakistan. Yeah. And this and was a time when both countries were actually one, even though they were on separate sides of the continent. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Actually, culturally, they can't be more different than each other. Right. And, but anyway, so the, uh, the, the election was uh, held under democratic pressure, I mean, um, mass movement in 1969. Uh, in 1970, this election was held, and uh, there was a majority uh, uh, vote went for this uh, the Bengali Bangladeshi, this, the, the, the East Pakistani party. Uh, but the army uh, refused to hand over power to this democratically elected government. Rather, they cracked down on this not only party, the whole nation, Bangladeshi, East Pakistanis. Uh, and um, and then it it it, it, it uh, led to the whole independent independent war, uh, which lasted nine months. And this was uh, for me is a very uh, special time because I was only fourteen. I just got out of Madrasa, escaped from Madrasa, uh, and uh, so uh, I witnessed this whole time in a very special uh, you know situations. But in a way. Uh, you know, it was a liberating factor for me because I was in, in un, inside Madrasa confinement. But then, you know, the war time, we, we skipped from our own village and took refuge in, in a more remote area. So, um, this is... to escape what was going... What was going on at that time? Why did you uh, This The whole from? genocide was, uh, you know, this army was, uh, you know, killing innocent, uh, you know, uh, unarmed people, uh, children, and it was definitely... Uh, particularly, uh, you know, genocide uh, against uh, minority community. Uh -huh. And the minority, Hindu, the Hindu minority community, community yeah, would be the primary target. And of course, uh, any Bengali Muslims would be also. So this is a, a situation where I think um, uh, became, you know, through Bangladesh concert, it was little known here in 1971, but it's, this whole genocide is forgotten. Right, so this uh, movie sort of talks about it. Talks too. about it, yeah. although in a backdrop. It's basically, mm -hmm. although it's about uh, my family, it's very much based on my own, uh, you know, family and my own time that I spent. I spent eight years in Madrasa. So it's basically 1969 to 1971 until the, the, the war begins and the film ends. That's right. the backdrop of this whole film. Maybe I should give a little bit more backdrop to some of the listeners who don't know. Um, Bangladesh, uh, there's a certain language and culture associated with the country now called Bangladesh, which was very different from what's now called Pakistan. And at one time, the countries were one country, actually. And then this period of turbulence that you're talking about is actually when the separation and the new nation... Yeah, and also this whole uh, Pakistan, so-called uh, the, uh, the nation of Pakistan, was founded on the basis of uh, religion uh, that is particularly Islam and uh, uh, but uh, you know uh, the the it, 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 the whole uh, the Bangladesh is created on the notion of uh, secular secularism in a sense that you know uh, you know it's not the state and religion should not have anything to do with and this whole mass uh, this massacre this genocide was committed in the name of religion mm -hmm. you know that was the time how then, um, it must have really impacted your family, because you made reference to having to leave and, and go somewhere else when this war came about. At 14 years old, though, how did you perceive of this situation in your life? And then, it must have impacted you because it does form the, the backdrop of this, this, this uh, award-winning film, The Clay Bird. Uh, well, the, the definitely, the uh, I would say that it, 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 it was... Uh, Although very difficult time, uh, a very bloody time that you know for a, for you know young person like me to witness so much uh, violence, uh, which I personally experienced, uh, uh, but also in a way is a time that uh, I was you know put exposed to uh, greater world, real world, 
and I think I, I matured a lot. And it's very interesting that it's not me only. It was kind of uh, a transformation for my mother, who, who she was under confinement by my father. But it's not just my, my mother and me. It's also my father uh, who uh, transformed quite a bit. He mellowed down his, his zeal and this, his imposing his decision on others has changed. It is after the war, after w witnessing what has been done in the name of this Islam or whatever, you know, the Muslim killing Muslims. Mm -hmm. uh, so he is the one who sent me to regular education. Right. So it the war really seventy one means a lot to, uh, to me personally. Right. And so he he actually changed from being more of a hardline religious to, person to, to more understand. And, and yeah. Mellowed down. So what what did you witness at that time? A lot of people don't really know about this period. This is uh, kind of like not really that well known here. Uh, yes, uh, th this is because um, for many reasons, you know, it, it was uh, um, uh, forgotten, for, for particularly because what happened afterward, the famine, uh, the inner uh, conflicts, the uh, the democratic government uh, was uh, overthrown in 1975. Uh, with a, a very bloody military coup, and it continued to be a military, successive military uh, things, which is like going back to the legacy of Pakistan. Mm -hmm. and it's been very tragic, and that's one of the reasons why this genocide uh, is completely, uh, you know, forgotten. Uh, but as uh, today's Bangladesh has a lot of the things to do with that time, because now the same, uh, I would say, the uh, kind of the war criminals, they were like Islamists. Uh, they are very much back in, in forefront. And this, this is becoming a, a big factor. But the thing is, is much more complex than before because uh, there's also the uh, serious backlash, uh, you know, of 9-11 and Afghan war and then the later Iraq war is having a serious backlash in, in, in a predominantly Muslim country like Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. So there you see that um, uh, this very much the, you know, we can see the, um, you know, the rise of uh, Islamic fundamentalism uh, is becoming a, a reality in mm -hmm. that part of the world. Uh, Catherine, you're the producer uh, of this film, The Clay Bird, and it is Bangladesh's first, I guess, um, major entry into the world of international competition. Uh, what was its reception like at Cannes? This is a na national, major, international film festival. It, it seems like it got a pretty good reception. How? Uh, but then I, I, I read somewhere that it was very controversial in Bangladesh. In what way and manner? Why, why was it controversial? Why was it censored almost in Bangladesh? Well, first of all, at Khan, I mean, definitely it was um, a, a great occasion, I think, for Bangladesh uh, cinema. And we were very proud to be there to uh, represent the country in a sense. I mean, uh, with a film like this is the first film to sort of really be exposed on the world stage from Bangladesh. You're not just presenting a film, you're presenting a whole country. And we're very much aware of that. But at the same time, it, w it was a very... Um, disturbing time for us because almost exactly at the same time as the film was premiering in Cannes, it was the opening film also for the director's fortnight uh, at the same time as it was opening there, the film also was being banned in Bangladesh now some filmmakers might take this as an opportunity to create a cause celebre around the film, but we rather wanted to do quite the opposite thinking that, you know we, we also First of all, since the film is representing Bangladesh, it also would be working against uh, uh, Bangladesh to highlight the fact that it's being banned by the government. And, of course, the international media wanted us. They were baiting us to make a statement against the government. Uh, but we uh, tried to avoid that as best as we could, on, uh, seeing a bigger picture, keeping that bigger picture in mind, because I think it, it was much more important, the positive news mm -hmm. about this and being the first film think, to represent Bangladesh. Yes, yeah, also because it, this is a very important thing, is this that it, the film brings out the complexity of Islam, and it's, and it, rather than dehumanizing Islam mm -hmm. or, or Bangladeshi mm -hmm. society or something. So, you know, it, it would be a mistake to allow this, uh, you know, ban to continue. So we went back 
and we uh, met the authority people and there's an appeal board and we said let's let's see the film again and it, they, when they saw the film then it really they realized that there was nothing really <laughs> <laughs> against uh, uh, Islam or anything and it was unbanned and it was eventually released in commercial cinema theater and people of all uh, walks of life really saw the film including madrasa students and religious mm -hmm. people and they welcomed the film uh, this is Apex Express, Asian and Pacific Islander Radio, right here on KPFA. And if you want to see the film, The Clay Bird, again, the premiere is Friday, April the 30th at 7 p.m. at the Castro Theater, 429 Castro Street in San Francisco. And the telephone number there is 415-621-6120. With us in the studio tonight are, again, uh, Tariq Masood, who is the director of the film Clay Bird. Producer Catherine uh, Masood, and also Ivan Jagadar, who has brought these uh, filmmakers and producers here to the Bay Area, to the United States, to present this award-winning film, The Clay Bird. <laughs> The sounds that you were hearing were from the movie Clay Bird, and the track is called Avant La Guerre, and it's about, you know, from the Clay Bird about the conflict in Bangladesh. For that, you are hearing a feature by Jenna Hota, and it's the first half of a two-part series about the, the movie with the producer and the director of the film. Next week, you can hear the second half of that interview. And you can see the Clay Bird at the, at the Castro Theater in San Francisco, 429 Castro Street at Market, and it's showing April 30th through May 6th. And if you want to get more information, you can check out www.thirdeye.org. It'll also, also be playing in San Rafael at the Smith Rafael Film Center. And that will be playing opening April 30th. Again, for more information, www.thirdeye.org. O -R -G. This is Apex Express on KPFA. And in the studio we have, we are very happy to have two people with us. And we have Lawton Chan and Adalia. And they're from the KPFA First Voice Apprenticeship Program. Thank you both for coming in. Thank you. So, you know, this program has been going on for quite some time. And many of the, um, you can hear many voices of graduates who are working in the station who may, you know, be doing projects outside the station. I know that there are many shows on KPFA that have been birthed out of the apprenticeship program. Graduates are running those shows like Hard Knock Radio. Um, you know, Waylon Southern and Sade are both graduates and they have worked on, um, they have, they are graduates of the program. That's right. Also, Seven Generations, Apex Express, our show right now. You know, Jenna and I are both graduates of the program. And Noel Hanrahan, who works with Mumia, the, doing the prison radio project, I think it's called. Um, she is a graduate. And so many other people. So, you know, Lawton and Adalia are here to talk about the program. So, Adalia, why don't you start off and give us a general idea of what the program is and let people know, you know, just what it is. <laughs> well, the program <coughs> started, it's been on since 1985. It is a um, very intense program. It's a year and a half, you know, long. 
So the commitment is tremendous, you know, uh, because you have to really put a lot of yourself in it. There is no other way to do it. And um, a year and a half. It's a year and it's a half. long. When we went through, it was only a year. So recently, <laughs> year and a half. Yes, there is mm -hmm. m much. There is always a lot to learn. You know, even when the the program is over, you're still learning stuff. I, I assume. And so on you're the right. <laughs> 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 on the first phase of the program, um, you learn about sound theory and basic radio production, things like that. Um, and then on the second phase, which is the phase I'm right now, uh, you're learning about engineering and producing, you know, things for, you know, other programs like the Full Circle magazine show that happens every Friday from 7 to, no to 8. So we're working uh, with that. With me. <laughs> yes, that's true. Um, and, and Latin, you're a new member of the apprenticeship program. What has it been like for you in these first months? And also, why, why did you want to get, why did you want to become a part of the program? Um, it, uh, I'll take the first question, uh, first. Um, it's been really interesting. Um, I, I think since, uh, since I started, I've, I think I've learned a lot about, um, about, about voice and radio, uh, radio dramas and news and engineering and board ops here at KPFA. Um, it's been, it's been very exciting and also very challenging. Um, there, there is a serious time commitment. Um, and, uh, what was the second question again? Why did you want to become a part of the program? Um, basically it's, it's because I've always been interested in radio and, and music and voice. Um, and uh, also, it's it's um, it's also a kind of a really good way to kind of um, serve your community and reach out. And what would you say your community is? Um, I, I feel like mostly I'd I'd be addressing like um, like me personally I'd be I'd be addressing the Asian Amer American community here in the Bay Area. Um, but I think the apprenticeship program we, we also try to reach out we we try to reach out um, <laughs> to lots of people. We were just telling him not to rattle his papers around. <laughs> yeah. So one thing that I want to stress about the program is that it brings uh, a diver diverse communities together That's right. in one room at one table for a year and a half. And Adalia, yes. maybe you can talk about that aspect of the program. In in you know you mentioned the commitment, but also like having you know the dy dynamics of working together. That's right, because uh, during this process, you, you know, it is inevitable that you have to do a group sort of process and, and you have to talk about race, class, gender, and sex, sex, sexual, Se uh, no. well, <laughs> sexual orientation, mm -hmm. you know, because it's all, you know, it's all part of learning about each other and how we can work together, you know, and as people of color, we are so used to, to be, uh, sort of put in that category that we, to fight each other instead of having a commonality of struggles to 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 accomplish you know and and move on you know what i'm saying so you outlined the phases briefly but what are some of the things like practical things that you've been learning either of you can answer this or both of you what have you been really learning in the program i've been learning uh, as a s personal thing, I I've been learning how to communicate with people and how to listen, you know, different, you know, uh, ways of approaching same situations. And, and like, uh, I've been meeting very interesting people as coming here and, and doing some, you know, helping with some of the productions. Um, so all this has been very interesting. So that's on one level and, and Latin, how about, touching on the technical because it's not all about you know com community building there are you you yeah. learn practical skills as well yes. so a lot and you want to touch on some of those things um yeah i think i've picked up a lot of technical skills since um since i've joined the apprenticeship program like we've been using a lot of sound editing um yes. uh we use that to like edit the news every mm -hmm. every tuesday um we do we, we do a lot of board ops like I was talking about, which is um, we get to record shows, do pre-production, yeah. stuff like that. I think a lot more of that stuff is coming up in the mm -hmm. uh, the second phase of the program. The first phase is 
uh, mostly like um, about kind of building a foundation, both technical right. and just like a group process foundation. And then I think the second phase is like more of the engineering and technical skills. I understand. Right. And maybe. Uh, Talk more about that. Yeah, the, uh, I was just going to add something towards the digital e editing, something I never thought. I, I used to have this really fantasy idea that, you know, whatever people say, that's it. I mean, now I learn, you can edit? What do you mean? You can <laughs> yeah. edit? That's why we sound so yeah. good, but this is edited right now. <laughs> that's true, that's true. <laughs> it's, live. Not, it's live. It's live. And I, I also want to say about the, the remote, um, the production of live remotes, and that was very exciting to be part of. And the, in the in the march against uh, the war that mm -hmm. happened three weeks ago in San Francisco, um, it, it was very interesting to be there and see how it all happens and not just be a listener. I mean, right. also, it, it was different. So these um, the things that you learn in the apprenticeship program are are empowering right. communities to bring their voice to the airwaves and yeah. to to kind of get back media. You know, it's been taken away from us, so it's an opportunity for you out there, listeners, to, you know, get involved with, with something that you can really have practical skills. And, you know, if you have a, if you want to represent something, you know, come through. So, Adalia, maybe either. Oh, did you want to say something? No, no. Okay. It's okay. Give us some information about the application process and the deadlines. Sure. Uh, yeah, the application I do on Monday, the, the April 26th. So uh, by 5 p.m., no exceptions, the application should be sent or, you know, uh, brought in to the station. Um, and there is a mandatory orientation night, which is on April 30th. It's a Friday, and it's, it will start at 7 p.m. And um, the group interview the, of everybody will be happening on May 7th and 8th. So be sure you are here by Monday at least to send to bring in the application. Okay. And are, is there a number that people should call to get an application? Sure, that is a number. We can all. Uh, I you bet can, you it's five one zero. It is five one zero eight four eight six seven six seven, extension six zero five, and you can also download it from the website of kpfa dot org, and or you can come to the station, which is one nine two nine Martin Luther King Jr. Way, during you know um, business hours. Great. So again, the applications are due Monday, April 26th. 5 p.m. is the deadline. We're serious about deadlines because time in radio means a lot. So there are no exceptions. Exceptions. Yeah. Um, and then there's a mandatory orientation on Friday, April 30th at 7 p.m. with interviews in May. Um, before we go, I want to talk a little bit more about the commitment. And, you know, if people maybe could just touch on commitment for a minute. Yeah, commitment is very important because you're bound to be here. You're going to be here at least two times a week for your classes so you can learn your skills. And that will be like Tuesdays and Thursday from 7 to 9.30 p.m. And apart from that, you're supposed to also do Monday shift work, which, you know, uh, will be of your choice, but it's a five-hour shift, which... That's when you actually have your hands-on things, you know, that you really learn how to touch the board and, and do other th stuff, really fun stuff. And Latin, did you want to add anything? Um, just that uh, the, the day shift is on any day. For, you can either do it Tuesday, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. Um, it's, it's basically if you can get off work for like half a day or like a day, mm -hmm. then you should be able to accommodate the program. So it's a free program, but the, the payment that you, you, you give is your time. Um, being committed to the group and the program, and also when you, you know, when you do get out of the program, your responsibility is to share the information and pass it on That's right. to your community and and be a doorway for your community. So one more time, can you give out the phone number for applications? Sure, it's five one zero eight four eight six seven six seven, and the extension is six zero five. I want to thank you both for coming on Apex Express, Lawton and Adalia. Thank you very thank much. You. And we'll be right back after this music break. Stay tuned. Back up, before I get back up and keep 
Check the vibes, do she does me lot, what's the point? So low the moza, we make you caught, the sweat come on you can't Pull it the at in the next school Or a collision I got to do on me any cool So I'm sketch for my moment to be in the queue Don't show the cool of it ever so long to me Life bitch you're not the most good to leave She got the back to call the technique So look at this and stand tight for me Shoot your car go soon to fight for me Make your whole team please decide for me Side to you don't know the mind I mean to the whole cons took a glide for you And then now you know what time it is
but step up to this side. Just forget about the time, and the just goes on. And it's your cost decision. Original styling, sound, innovation. Just me up on the microphone. Make the people get around. Switch on my time. It's musical mutation. We still got the wrong time. Let me break it down. Like me, noise don't shine. People just pull the bond. So you take it all. This is double the rest one. Keep on the go and listen to Asia. We are the in a combination. We still walk with this, so we still love. Keep on the bars in the connotation. We call it through with the massive sound. BMQ, no, it's mono station. Go play show the ladies and gentlemen. All the people get done to come along. So watch this. And again and again. Not to them, to us, the BMQ. What you want to feel is the man in the vibes. The music you're hearing is by Goku with the cut time in their hip hop group from Japan. And it's time for our community calendar on Apex Express. On Wednesday, April 28th, there will be a documentary showing called Caught in Between What to Call Home in Times of War by Lena Hoshino. This documentary film tells the story of San Francisco Bay Area Muslim and Japanese American communities coming together in solidarity after 911. It is about the power of people standing together to fight for civil liberties and human rights. This film is happening on Wednesday, April 28th at 7 p.m. at San Francisco State University, Burke Hall, room 28 in San Francisco. And it's $3 to $10 donation, but no one is turned away for lack of funds. For more information, 415-338-6591. Also, international activists are initiating a three day fast across from the World Bank to coincide with its annual meetings. They're calling for attention to the legacy of empower impoverishment associated with the forced displacement of people from their homes by World Bank funded large scale infrastructure projects such as mines and dams. They demand that the bank made But that the bank make policy changes to ensure the rights of people adversely affected by bank lending practices. And this, there will be a press conference announcing a three day fast on Friday, April 23rd at 10 30 a.m. The pre press conference will take place at Frank Murrow Hall, directly across from the World Bank, at 18th between H and Pennsylvania in San Francisco. Also, a reminder about the screening by Um, of Refugee on Thursday, April 29th, and it's co sponsored by NATA, VYDC, eBayZ, Hard Knock Radio, <clears throat> our own KPFA, Hard Knock Radio. And it's, um, if you want to get more information about this film, it's at www.refugeethemovie.com. It's happening at the Herbs Theater um, on April 29th, 7 p.m., and that's 401 Van Ness Avenue in San Francisco. We have a couple ticket giveaways for you tonight. The first one is um, to give you a, one pair of tickets to the musical spoof drama film from India, Ragu Romeo, Friday on April 23rd at 1.15 p.m., San Francisco International Film Festival. And that's at the Kabuki Theater at Post and Fillmore. So if you want to go see this spoof movie, it will uh, be a fun one. Check it out. Give us a call here at 510-848-4425. I will take caller number nine. And then that, that's on the 23rd at 1.15 p.m. Also, we have one pair of tickets to give away to Hamsa Lila with Karsh Kali. And that's at the Fillmore. This show starts at 9 p.m. on Friday, the 23rd of April. I will take caller number 12 for this pair of tickets. Again, that's on the 23rd at the Fillmore. So give us a call, caller number 12 at 510-848-4425. You've been listening to Apex Express on KPFA. Jenna Hota, thank you very much for being at the board, and I want to wish you all well, peace, and stay tuned for The Bonnie Simmons Show. Mm -hmm.